With the series on the point of being finished, this shoot had a certain end-of-term feel to it, with a couple of in-jokes and cameos. The mechanic who delivers number six's sports car was played by Graham Nern, the managing director of Caterham Cars, who supplied the Lotus 7 seen throughout the series. The script also called for a shot of number six's house with an estate agent sign outside. As usual, the script was non-committal, stating only that we cannot read the name of the firm, but we can clearly see the words estate agent. In a situation such as this, it was common practice to use the name of a crew member to avoid any copyright problems. This technique had already been used on the previous episode for the Witchwood Butcher, Baker and Candlestick Maker shop signs, basing them on Brendan Stafford, David Tomlin and Leonard or Len Harris respectively. With this in mind, John Legue recalls the name used on the Fallout estate agent sign. But when I did this one, being rather green at the game, I wasn't too sure. And I asked Jack, the art director, uh, when we got to this episode, he said, whose name shall I put on it? He says, oh, I don't know, stick your own on. So I did. And uh, I stuck my son's name on, thought it sounds better. But this one caused me a, a few more problems after Jack had said, use your own name. And we were sitting in rushes one day, watching the, the, the day's rushes from the day before. And there was the sign on the screen, full screen credit, bold as brass. And then Dave Tomlin's voice from down the front says, who did that? I don't want that name up there. And I'm slowly sliding down in my seat at the back of the preview cinema, trying to keep out of the way. And then of course, this you all know the sign suddenly removed and whipped away and I breathed a sigh of relief again. But I've learned never to do that again, always to be careful where you put your name. Well, when it was all over, uh, I think a lot of people were relieved because there, there was no doubt about it. It was a very difficult series to work on, one of the most demanding jobs I've ever had. But. Uh, it all went very well. I think that, as I say, people were sort of, well, that's the end of it. Now it's all about looking out for something else. But uh, it was a wonderful experience to work on. I mean, a lot of people used to say to me they didn't understand this, they didn't understand that. And I could never make out why they didn't understand it. I mean, when the scripts used to arrive, they were late, sure they were late. And there were lots of rewrites, well, it was normal par for the course. And that, uh, when they uh, eventually arrived and they were all settled for, they used to do it and get on with it. But then when people say they didn't understand it, I could never make out why. I mean, uh, it was straightforward filmmaking. It was difficult, but I mean, there was nothing extraordinary about it. Well, having been involved in, having watched it, like the whole of the rest of the country, I suppose, I remember the, was it a Sunday? You won't remember. It was, it was a Sunday night and uh, the whole of Sunday revolved around this the evening when we were going to see the current episode of The Prisoner. So the last few weeks leading up to the final one, I remember the whole country being on tenterhooks. Everyone was talking about it. And finally, <laughs> this long-awaited episode arrived and we still didn't know. We still didn't know. It was very frustrating. But brilliant marketing.